Hey everybody, this is Brent Central Arkansas. This is my fifth generation IHG, Intense Hydroponic Grows, what that stands for. It's my fifth generation kit, if you will. It has one less tray than the previous one. It's got a different type of cover. It's, it grows extremely well, and it's gonna be a whole lot less expensive than any of the other kits I've ever made. So let me show you what is in it. It comes with a kit, and then I will do a grow for you just to show you what it is. This is a cover. This is a one-inch tray. This is used as a cover. Underneath the cover is the grow area. The grow area consists of a medium screen and a one-inch bootstrap farmer mesh tray. It's also the new type of tray. If you remove the cover, I mean the grow tray, what you see here is the reservoir. It's, uh, it's got more liquid in it now because of the way it's constructed. And it's highly aerated, which is perfect for IHG. And it's also in the new Made in the USA food safe trays. So what I'm going to do now, well, let, me, let me show you. This is These three pieces come with the kit. And also what comes with the kit is an antifungal. This is for 16 ounces. This little contraption here. It's got a vial in it. And in the vial is um, high grade olive oil and potassium silicate. Uh, that's the mixer for it. And in this little package here is potassium bicarbonate. And all you do is you get a 16 ounce spray bottle like this one here I'm going to use and you pour in the potassium silicate and warm water mixes a little easier and then once that's mixed you just dump the vial in and you shake it and you're good to go and now you've got 16 ounces of the acclaimed <laughs> IHG super antifungal so that's all the components. It's probably going to be right around $60 uh, if I make it and ship it to you. Um, you can contact me by email. I'll put my email here. Um, if there's enough interest in it, I'll start making kits again. If there's not, well, I'll just grow in them. But now, what I want to do is I want to show you how awesome this thing grows. What I'm going to grow is the most common thing. Um, I know it grows. I, I've grown lots of different things in ISG over the years, and I didn't change anything that's going to um, make, diminish any type of grow. In fact, this should enhance it because of the seal is even better than before. So this is Todd Seeds, and this is Broccoli. Um, which one is it? Let's see if it says on the back. Yeah. Broccoli Sprouting Seeds. When was this? What's the date on this? used by January 2024 is what it says. Um, I did buy this towards last year, the fall, maybe summer last year. So anyway, that's what we're going to grow. Let me get a scale here. I've already pre-measured it, but I'm just going to show you how I do it. I'll put a scale on here, turn it on. Now these are mouthwash cups. They're easy for spreading. I'm going to demonstrate that too. So I turn that on and I'm gonna tear it out. Let me bring you closer. All right, so you can see here that the cup weighs 1.6 grams. Tear it out means zero it out. Now I'm going to put on a cup full of seed and it's 65.1. We're gonna grow 65 grams of seed in this IHG and that's because we can. Now in my books, I have a first edition and a second edition of earlier versions of IHG uh, assemblies, which worked very well still. But in those books, I recommend 50 grams. But I'm going to push it a little bit just for this grub. So as you've seen here, I've got the bubbler already going. It takes just under one gallon. And this is a milk jug. I save them for purposes like this. It takes just under one gallon, and the way to tell if it's full enough is, oh, and by the way, that's, that one gallon is half nutrient. I use Master Blend Solution, and I mix it per directions, 
and then I add 100% uh, uh, more water, so it's 50% nutrient, 50% water, or half nutrient strength. And that's all that microgreens need. Now for a few days, you don't have to do anything to it as the roots find their way into the reservoir below. But as they start getting bigger and drinking more, I will add full strength nutrient to it. So by the time it's harvested, it's nearly full strength. So you can see here that the level you pour it to is when the bubbler is bubbling up, you can see that it's starting to touch the bottom of the screen here. And when that happens, it'll make contact with the seed and it'll uh, engross the seed. That plus once the cover's on it, there will be a high moisture area and that high moisture will uh, keep the seed moist, which is very, very critical to germination and what makes this really, really a good way to grow. So typically what I do is I take my sprayer, I give it a little bit of a shake to make sure it's mixed. You can see it's wet because I had the screen on it, but I'll spray it just like this. And any, any sprayer, 60 ounce sprayer, if you're using the antifungal here will work. Just pick one up at Walmart, Dollar General, or whatever. So I sprayed the antifungal on the tray so that when I put the screen on it, it kind of wets the bottom. And you can see here where it's, if I push down, it's becoming a little bit more solid. Then I wet the screen. And wetting the screen helps uh, make sure that the seed, when the seed hits, it'll get the bottom of the seed kind of moist and it'll um, help the seed stick. Now I'm gonna spread this for you. I may end up speeding it up. All right, I've done spraying it. Now we need to coat the top with the antifungal. Antifungal helps is a preventative measure and it works absolutely wonderful with the IHG kits. It ensures, I, I can't remember the last time I've had any problems with disease or mold or anything. The way IHG works coupled with the super antifungal, which is, I've had so many comments, wonderful comments from people over the years about how awesome this stuff is. And the potassium bicarbonate and the oregano oil are the key ingredients, high quality oregano oil. Because of what's in the oregano oil and the antifungal, antibacterial properties of this mixture. So we're going to spray the top and you'll see that the seed will get darker. Now this is a 16 ounce bottle and I will show you at the end of the grill. I had it nearly full. I keep about an inch from the top so I can shake mix it and I'll show you what one grows worth of use, uh, how much is used because you're only using it from now until you take the cover off and set it into the light to start growing and that's the only time you need it. So I'd say it's somewhere around four days, roughly, uh, use. So the one of 16 ounce of this antifungal will last for quite a few grows. I'd say, I don't know for sure. I've never really kept track of it. You'd think I would, but I know it's several, several for sure. Maybe eight to 15. All right, the next thing we wanna do is we want to put the cover in. Now the cover is just the one inch solid tray and it fits down onto the uh, grow tray, as I call it, the one inch mesh tray. And I just put these fractional weights, these are little barbell weights that I found that work really, really excellent for um, growing microgreens because uh, typically I put about two pounds and each one of these are half. So for broccoli, it's typically about two pounds is I believe what I uh, mentioned in the book both books actually and so what that does is it weighs the tray down and as the seeds grow they're pushing up against this cover here and what that does is it kind of simulates soil and it and it helps remove the 
seed coating from the cotyledons and it helps the roots penetrate lower below especially when planting as dense as I'm planting and so it also ensures a tighter seal between the mesh tray and the cover tray and that creates a super humid environment and the bubbles popping underneath it they pop up they hit the seed and the little bit of gap between the grow tray and the cover tray and it makes it super humid and moist and it just it's perfect for germinating now as they grow and you'll see the broccoli will lift the tray up with, even with the weight on it now what I'm going to do is we're done for today this is the longest day it takes and I have literally spent probably easily less than 30 minutes including washing the trays and getting the screen and everything in the grow room uh, gathering the seed for the grow, weighing it and all that, less than 30 minutes easily and then every day after that it's just probably 30 seconds or so if that and I'll show you that as we grow so I'll bring you back every single day until we harvest I did want to mention quickly something about seeds this particular one I bought Todd seeds because I, I, I usually use True Leaf uh, but I have used Todd seeds in the past um, I'm a big advocate of, of True Leaf Market but um, uh, I found Todd Seeds is also pretty good and I think with this particular case I had a hard time getting broccoli uh, so I bought from Todd Seeds but any reputable, reputable company that does microgreens uh, will sell, you know, that are, that are good, it will sell a quality seed and you don't need to go out of your way to get one specific seed just if you find a good seed source continue to use that seed so like I've mentioned uh, demand will tell me if I'm gonna continue to make these but it'll probably be right around $60 I'm thinking for the assembly and um, the, the thing is it makes so much you'll see it harvest I'm just beginning but I'm so confident of what it's going to do um, it makes so much compared to any style I've seen. Now I quit paying attention to other microgreen growers. I don't want to get stuck into any kind of odd thing with other microgreen growers. But um, but it, it produces so much that even if you market sold these things uh, per ounce microgreen sell for it's so expensive. One grow, I'm, I'm pretty much guaranteed one grow would pay for this the whole thing including shipping and everything for me to send it to you. Now, I haven't done that because I don't sell microgreens, but uh, take the time, go out and look and find out what microgreens are selling for, uh, and you'll see at the harvest at the end of this, and you just times the amount of ounces, times uh, what the going rate is, and you'll see if it pays for itself. I might even do a summary at the very end of this, but I just wanted to mention it's a really good deal. I've never ever sold anything this inexpensive before. Um, I've simplified it to the absolute bare minimum and the only thing extra you need is a source of light. Uh, it doesn't even have to be super bright light. It can be um, next to a window and you need a fish uh, aquarium pump to power the bubbles. And That's it. That's all you need. One of the things that Bootstrap bootstrap farmer added with their new trays made in the United States with these little cutouts here so that you could lift it easily and that's just a wonderful wonderful addition to being able to lift trays and uh, so yeah that before I'd put a clip on here to make it easier because sometimes it can get to be a pain in the butt but with these new trays not a problem Twenty-four hours later, roughly one day of growth. We'll call it. And that's what the germ germination looks like, which is really good germination. We're going to hit it with the fungal just to get a quick spray. At this point, there's no roots below are uh, very very minimal. Come back tomorrow 
Normally I would check the reservoir below, but experience tells me there's not going to be any usage of any of the liquid until the roots dive in the bullet. This is day two, 48 hours later. You can see the temperature here. My little air conditioner in the grow room is not keeping up with the 100 degree weather outside. We're getting consistent 95 and above weather for days and it's just not keeping it cool. Of course this is the afternoon and it's kind of the hottest point of the day but you can see 92.3 is pretty warm. In the mornings it, it's cooler and then in the evening as it gets dark it's close to it. Alright, let's take a look at this. Oh, isn't that neat? I love the look of when it's starting to sprout really well. Alright, I've got the antifungal and I'm going to just shoot it. Be liberal with it. Doesn't hurt anything at all. Any stage of the plant. I use a version of this in my garden. Maybe I'll do a video on that before too long. But that's it. That's all there is to it. We'll take a look at the roots. You can see the bubbles go in there. We also, I'll check off camera, but I think the, because um, I've got this other tray in my hand while I'm filming. I think the reservoir, yeah, it looks clean. The little bubbles you see, like here, that's from the antifungal. It's not a big deal at all. Um, so yeah, we've hit it with the antifungal, and now we're going to do... Whoop, let's put it back where it was, because it's not quite lifting up the tray. It's lifted it up some, but it's not lifted it up enough. So I will put these back on here in the moisture and now we're done until tomorrow took all of what about 30 seconds actual um, if I wasn't filming maybe there you can see the temperature is 87.8 today I believe this is day three and I don't know if you can see here but you can see microgreens have pushed the tray up And look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? It's a nice, beautiful carpet. I'm going to spray it. And because it's pushed up now, we're going to flip the cover over. Now this antifungal is just a preventative. And prevention is always better than the cure, is what they say. Now we're going to turn this over, upside down, and again, we're going to wait for the plants to push it up. And once they push it up this time, once it does it next time, we're going to put it into the light. I'll put the day in here. I'm not sure what it is. I'll probably put it in before, just before the video clip. But anyway, I'll show you here that I've got these little clips here. And they're just these little paper clips, if you will, that secures paper. About any size will do. But all that does is just keeps the tray from uh, migrating. Um, and it tends to only do it when I put extra weight on here. So let's take it off and have a look and see how we're doing today. The temperature is 87.8 and the uh, humidity is about the same as it's been. Roughly around 50. It's warm in here. You just can't keep it nice and cool. But I can see it looks like the tray being in the lift in some area here. I think that is good to put it to the light. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove the tray now and we're going to grow it totally in the light. Let's try. 
tray up here for a minute. I think I've talked about this, but if I haven't, I've got a jug full of hydroponic nutrient. This particular one I'm using is Master Blend. I'm mixing it per directions and then half strength, um, which means I'm adding double the water it normally would take. So let's take a look here. Oh yeah, we're drinking. The um, reservoir is clear. Now, now it's not so critical. Water can even come up into the top of the grow tray. Uh, at the bottom of the microgreens, it won't hurt it. You probably don't want to do that too much. But take a look at those roots. Aren't they nice? So that's all I do from this day every day. It's probably going to need a little bit of water added. If not every day, then every other day probably for sure. Keep an eye on it. So that's it for today. Um, I'm not going to do an antifungal uh, today because it goes into the light and we only do it until it goes into the light. I wanted to show you this here too. It stays pretty mixed with potassium silicate as the emulsifier. It just really stays mixed. I don't see any oil at the top or anything so I'll just shake it a little bit anyway to make sure. Um, but that's all that was used in this whole grow. I would say a half inch maybe, maybe a half to three quarters of an inch was used. And so if you got that, that's about six more inches. So I don't know, about 12 more grows or so, 13 more grows. So that's it for today and bring you back tomorrow. We'll see what it looks like. Should be greener cotyledons starting to develop. Temps are quite a bit hotter than I'd like, but it's in the upper 90s day after day these days, and again, that's just hard for that little air conditioner to uh, keep it cool. But the broccoli is still growing, and the cotyledons have greened up, and they're beginning to expand here. That's pretty much it for today. I will show you what the roots look like, and... Oop, I need to add some nutrient to it here. That's all we got to do for today. I'll bring you back tomorrow. Let me get wider with my leavings. Now I'm rubbing. The plants have strengthened up some under the light. And if there's any seed holes, this will knock those off, plus it kind of disturbs the plants. Um, some that aren't getting as much light may get some extra light. And so I do this rubbing thing from this point forward until harvest. So that's it for today. Um, all we're going to do now is, uh, it's almost it, I'm going to add some nutrients. is it for today. I'll bring you back tomorrow. Looking gorgeous. Cotyledons are starting to spread now. They're getting a little taller. As they get taller, when I do this, it makes more room for other microbes. So just kind of push them around a little bit. That's it. We check it. We rub a little bit and then we lift it to see how much yeah, it is drinking now pretty good. So I'm going to add some more liquid. And that's all we're going to do till tomorrow. Alright, next day. And I'm, this is going back to back for you, but it's been 24 hours since the last one. Uh, and this is 24 hours of growth since, obviously. And you can see the cotyledons are getting bigger and a lot of people most would probably harvest at this stage they're pretty good size but what I tend to try to do is maximize the grow as much as possible so the size just moving the 
cotyledons around like this so light can penetrate down to get the smaller cotyledons and push these apart further as they grow they'll push each other apart uh, to get to the light and that'll increase your harvest weight so for a few extra days maybe one to three extra days you can get a significant amount of harvest um, a lot of times I'll look for the first true leaf to barely start um, growing and then that's when I'll harvest so that's pretty much it for today it's the same thing as every day at this point I'm looking at the reservoir it's nice and clear adding some nutrient water and every day that I add this um, this is a hundred percent strength every day that I add it it's uh, strengthening the overall amount that's in the reservoir and is providing fuller strength to the plants which can take it now because it started off in a weaker supplement and it boosts the growth even more so that's it for today Another probably would have taken me, if, if I didn't have to record it, probably would have taken me 10 seconds to look at it, rub, lift the end, and, and do that. So it's really easy. Yep, today is harvest day. You're going to take it out, and I'm going to harvest it and get a wait for you. I'm going to harvest this over the sink. And when I began, I'm just going to fast forward. I've got my mother-in-law in there watching TV, and I don't want to record the sound of Law and Order <laughs> over this. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take the top tray out, and I'm going to lean it and um, set away aside the reservoir on the bottom and lean it and just let it uh, drain a little bit. Just like so. So I'll remove this. Let's see if you can see that. Those are the roots. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to let it sit there and drain at an angle for about five minutes or so. What you can see are the scissors and the mat to the right side of the screen, right upper part of the screen. And then I've got the microgreens that have been draining for about two minutes or so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the tray and pull the screen out and harvest it over the sink. So let me show you what that looks like. All I'm doing by easily doing it like that is just trying to prevent from stretching the screen. The screens are easily usable for many years if you don't stretch them or cut them. it hopefully it recorded it yep and if you look at it you can see the large amount of seeds are against the screen itself along with some of the stem um, this is the non garbage disposal side but I've got a bag here that I'm going to keep these roots and um, give to my neighbors chickens these stems and roots but I wanted to show you how easy it is to get the 
stuff off with just the tips of your fingers, not nails, but just the tips of your fingers. It's just really easy to do, so simple. It's, uh, it's kind of gratifying too to do it. So you just pull it off with your fingers, just like so. And then what I typically do is um, I give it a rinse with the sink sprayer, and then I'll just take a nylon scrubby uh, scrubber, which usually is attached to a sponge, and um, just go over it a couple times with some soap, and it's done. It's good to go. If there's any, anything lingering for any reason whatsoever, you can put it outside in the shade, and once it dries, uh, it flakes off. Um, and that may be preference for you. Okay, so this is the roots and seeds that I'm going to put in the sack. The neighbor's chickens, and there's more here in the sink that I will grab quickly, and then the rest will just rinse down into the garbage disposal. I'm glad this isn't metal screen. Ow! That would hurt! Alright, let's take a look at the microgreens here. It's a lot of microgreens. Now we're going to do the weight. Let's turn on the scale. We're going to put an identical tray that the microgreens are on, another cover tray. And we're going to zero it out. And the reason for the cup is so that you can see the scale still. So we're going to zero it out now. It's set for ounces. The next tray I put on here will be nothing but the ounces of the microgreens. Let's see what we got out of this grow. 22.3 ounces. That is a lot of broccoli microgreens, don't you think? This is Brent, you guys, with the new fifth generation microgreens kit. 22.3 ounces.